word is inspired by a comment we had um, on one of our episodes with uh, Richard about a week or two ago. And first of all, I'd like to thank um, Serenity 1983 for, giving, for, for, for commenting because this is giving us fuel for this episode. Um, and also thank you for the kind words. Thank you for um, the kind words that you gave us. But this isn't about um, retorting or, or fighting back. It's about using this beautiful message, this, this um, comment to, to um, create and to show relationships are um, a dance really. So it's about dancing within a relationship. Uh, you can't have a relationship with another person on your own. Of course, uh, your dance within yourself is a start of the relationship with anybody. And this is where we want to go with this episode. So sit back, relax, and remember the change starts with you. And uh, it's when we point fingers, we're always pointing fingers at ourselves anyway. But without further ado, thank you again for your comment. and. I'd really like your comment again um, once you've watched this to see if things perhaps have changed in your perspective. We're but as it is, but what, it, what I'm saying again, without further ado, the change starts with us. So this is Karina, Break Fear, Find Freedom, and with me today is Richard. Hello, Richard. How are you today? <laughs> Good morning, Karina. I'm well. Good morning, everybody. You know, that was... Um that was an interesting comment, and I love the fact that we are able to speak and, and, and open up and just touch, touch, touch base on it. You know, I think for me, I mean, really speaking on, on, on relationship levels, there are seasons where you are good. And there are seasons where there's discord. And there's seasons where there's resentment. Seasons of disconnect. And then, of course, seasons of stepping out of, of a marriage or a relationship. Because for whatever reason, there is no more connection. <coughs> And if you are really in a, in a relationship that is not suited to you anymore because people change, people grow, people want more for themselves than what they currently have. You can say that you're, maybe you're sitting in a stagnant relationship or you're sitting in a stagnant marriage or whatever whatever it is and this goes for everybody does it make a difference what type of relationship between two humans between a business partner between family members the list goes on i want to i want to make sure that we one we don't offend anyone here but I also want to note that if somebody speaks their point of view, somebody speaks from the heart, from their side, and you are ridiculed or you are messaged or you are it's really difficult to put the words into place because I want to make sure that I'm 100% clear. If you find yourself in a situation where you are uncomfortable, your voice is not heard, you are disrespected, I think anyone on God's green earth would step out of a relationship. And if that happens to be you, there are ways and channels, groups, 
Okay, uh, before you go down that road, Richard, just I want to stop you for a moment, okay? Sorry. Yes. Um, we talk, uh, uh, she did mention about, um, which is very important in relationships, we know about that. And we're talking relationships in general, like you were saying. Um, romantic, this is, this is about romantic relationships, but relation, we, we're dancing with relationships all uh, throughout the day. You know, business, uh, friends, family, um, social media, the, the, the list goes on and on. But one thing that she said that was very important is she talks about um, like transparency within the relationship. So now I'm going to ask you, um, which is 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 difficult uh, within uh, because I I mean I know I've been in in in, in bad and I had a bad marriage myself, right? It's difficult sometimes to be transparent with someone when you're feeling judged or you're feeling. Um, you're feeling like you've been uh, you're being manipulated or whatever it is. However, where do you find the courage to be transparent? And is it easier to walk away from the relationship or to actually stand up for yourself and be transparent? Because at the end of the day, the transparency is really about how you feel about yourself, isn't it? Yeah, I I, I would say so. And I think for a situation that. Um that I've experienced. I again, it, I don't want to get into details and, and, and everything about it, but I just know that the fact that when two fall out of discord, there is no more connection. Whether you're going to try to be honest or you're or you're not going to be honest, it doesn't make a difference. It's like you've fallen out of sync. You've fallen out of out of communication. Um, and that was the only way that I knew that I can understand getting on and moving on. I don't understand for, for the reasons that others do what they do. I'm only control. I'm only yes. in control of me. Yes. And yes. I'm responsible for my actions. My actions, whether they were wrong or right, that's not for anybody to judge or comment on. Yes. I have to answer to me. What did I feel comfortable doing in the way that I felt? And everyone's going to be different. Everyone's going to feel this, you know, a different type of emotion. Of course. My emotions were just gone. In a perfect world, two people can get together at a table, sit down, and talk out their differences. Discussing that whatever is going on here is not working. And when you run into a wall where there is no communication or there is pushback, that that communication is not heard or not received, it doesn't resonate then one only has that choice to get up and go, however you go. Okay, so um, I'm going to twist, twist this around. I agree with you, right? That's right, because it's difficult, especially in a relationship where there's been so much happening, um, there's so much underlying um, tension, the resentment, anger, fear, all those emotions, and, and, and they, they, especially in a romantic relationship, those are deep, deep, deep emotions, and they're difficult sometimes to, to um, explain and to, to show people how you're really feeling because it becomes contentious. So in a real world, in a, in a perfect world, you would sit at a table and say, okay, let's have that conversation. Now, I'm going to turn it around because you were saying, like, if someone doesn't hear you, what do you do? You walk away. What about you? Were you hearing her? Was I hearing her? Yes. So were you yeah. hearing her cry for help? Because remember, people cry for help in many, many different ways. A lot of people hide with, with addictions, right? Because it's... it's the pain is so much, it's easy to just, it's, it's easier, I mean, I'm not saying it's easy, I'm putting it in inverted commas, it's easier right, to, go, right, right. to go for sugar or for alcohol, for drugs or whatever, because then you don't have to face the real pain 
okay? And other people start reacting and screaming and shouting and, and accusing and judging and, and, and trying to control the situation. So, again, it's very difficult in that situation, and, and I'm just throwing it back to you as part of the conversation. Yeah, I, and I, and did, I, did you hear her? Yeah, and that was a, is this all theoretical, of course. Yeah, that was a great that was a great question, and and, and again, in in a situation like that, there was no there was no hearing because the respect and the love was gone. Yes. So if 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 there was if there was an opportunity at one point where it was just communication, love, respect, all the way down the line, I think there was so much baggage from the very beginning that came out. Um, again, you know, you have to understand the history of the of, 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 of a couple. You have to understand the history of how they started, where where they were, what where they went through, and all the processes that go through there. So in my mind, there was resentment. In my mind, there was just unhappiness. In my mind, there was no love given. It was conditional. I, one, tried to do whatever I can do. And you have to remember, there are kids involved. This isn't just a couple. There were kids involved. Mm -hmm. So the fact of getting up and leaving was not an option. That was not an option. Okay, I'm going to stop you there again. <laughs> Sorry, Richard. <laughs> Um, a lot of times we say, um, in a relationship, we say, oh, you know what, I have to stay, I, we stay together for the kids. Yeah. And if we're really honest with ourselves, and if we look back, and, and, and if we realize, and, and as we grow older, or if we as adults look back and say, why did my parents stay together? Because it actually destroyed us. You know, because it's it's not okay to grow up in a in a in a in a home where there's silence, where there's anger, where there's where there's resentment, where there's there's actual hate. Because you, you, you all come trying to come together to make something work that doesn't work. So, don't you think? And I'm throwing it back to you um, that staying to, saying that you're staying together for the kids is actually selfish on your part, and it's a cop out. Okay, and it's just built on pure fear. What do you say about that? Yeah, oh yeah, pure, pure fear, yeah, P fear of the unknown, because again, those aren't thoughts going through the process, going through that, that time frame. You're not, you're not, it, it's not really a thought process at the moment, but I have to be, you know, I, I, I want to be open and honest. I'm, I don't want to dance around something. There were many times where I sat down and said, look it, we need to sit, we need to figure this out. The, you know, we're, the, this is not good for everybody. This is not mm -hmm. good for the kids. And the damage was already done by the time we even realized talking about it. You know, I didn't spend a lot of time at home. I spent a lot of time at work. So when I came home, that was just, you know, that time. Um, it, it's just very difficult to, to go through, but I think with the comment, what was there, it was it wasn't coming from, it wasn't coming from a good place. The comment, and let's let's be, let's be open, but we're not going to come back at a comment. We're we're just answering a comment, as gently and as kind as we possibly can. I want to make sure that we did respond to this comment, not only via text in a comment I wanted it to be in a discussion and only only the ones that watch this will receive the message that we're that we're talking about some people may not even know about the message but the message is clear here that this is going to another individual or two so with that said and done relationships are a time and place for two people when the dance is over, the dance is over. One must let go. One grows, moves on. Let it go. And I think that's going to be pretty much where we're at right now with this.
Okay, um, so yes, the comment was there, and that's what um, fueled this conversation. Yes. We're talking, so thank you again for that comment. Um, I appreciate that. But what I'm saying to you is, again, yes, when we have to, a lot of times, we hold on to a relationship out of fear, and then the relationship starts smelling bad, right? It starts because <laughs> you, it's like holding on to a corpse. Okay. Oh, and, yes. Okay. And I mean, think about it <laughs> because like that's it. what the relationship is dead, and we're still holding on. Oh, um, God, yes. So now, uh, tell me, Richard, how do you let go in love? Because at the end of the day, you can you can walk away from a relationship, but you sometimes you're still holding on to that corpse. Okay. You're still holding on to that corpse even though you've walked away. You're still holding on to that corpse even though you think you've let go. So how yeah, do you well, know once you've buried the corpse? And I know, and I'm sorry, and, and, and it's, it's, I'm very visual, and I think maybe we need the visual exactly here to to exp to, to to get into the the nitty gritty of this um, right conversation. Right, right. You know, and, and again, I. I, I can't speak on that because I'm one that lets go, gone, done. I don't, I don't linger in things. Okay, oh, so very, now very difficult for me. Okay, though. so just hold on one minute, okay? Yeah. And I know I'm, I'm, I'm just, but tell me how you do that because a lot of people can't do it. Like I say, a lot of people say they're doing it, they walk away from the relation, but they're still holding on to the corpse which just affects their lives, affects your life completely. How do, oh, you, how do you cut, take the corpse, bury it with love and move on to your, the next phase or the next chapter, beautiful chapter of your life? How, you do know, you, it, how does Richard do that? Well, that, that was very interesting because getting away meant that there was freedom. Getting away meant that there was no more surrounding discord. Getting away meant that I was taking my life in a new direction. Mm. And right, you know, there are people that, that, that hang on and don't do, don't do it and linger on it all their whole life. And they end up being miserable. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to make sure that I was looking out for me. There is nothing holding me to being with anybody that I choose not to be with. And making it clear, the world as we know it, society as we know it, look at marriage as the ultimate connection to one human being to another. But it does not mean it's a lifelong sentence. And as I mentioned before, people change. Yes. People grow. Has nothing to do with others pulling you out. It just has to do with what you experience personally in that household. Now, if you have a household that is full of just chaos, a household that's full of discord, no communication, no respect. And then you throw in another human being being there. That is part of the problem too, where there was actually a physical altercation When you are disrespected in your own home by another human being or two, I'll let you answer that. I'll let our audience answer that. Okay. Walk um, away. Yes, yes. Walk away. So, so okay, so yes, I'm, I'm going to, um, I just want to reiterate that I, and, and say, how do you get to that point where you realize, you know what, I have to choose Richard at this point, um, okay? 
I, I, I'm not going to accept this anymore because you can, you can accept, yeah. accept, accept, and it just pushes you down, pushes you down, and you feel worse and worse and worse about yourself. The relationship gets worse and worse, and it's just a, an endless cycle, messy, ugly cycle. So how do you, how did you at that point, or how do you at that point choose Richard and say, you know what? I deserve more than this. I want, well, maybe not, I, I want more for my life. Maybe that's a better, maybe that's a better statement. I'm, I'm not talking for you. I'm just assuming. How did you get to that point where you said, it's enough. I want more for my life. This is not what I want anymore. When was that point and how did you come to that conclusion? Oh, that was, that, that was very easy. That was, that was a no brainer. That was, that was um, living, living the whole, the, the whole cycle, and summing up that this is not the place for me anymore. There was no respect. There was no structure, and I knew that I had to just get off on my own. I had to. I just had to go. So was there it a trigger at any point? Was there the, a no, final no. straw? No. Or was no. it just a build up over time? Yeah. It was it was pretty much a combination of, of everything, but I think with the with the other person that was in the house that was just so disrespectful. There was no reason for me to be there. I could not live there anymore. I could not live in a house that was full of full of anger, hate and discord and laziness and I that wasn't for me. That wasn't for me. That wasn't my my place anymore. Um, I already knew at one point because I was already I was already doing film. I was already doing everything that I was you know doing, and I knew that I wanted something more. And let me just I just want to say this, you know, I don't know everyone's situation. All, all I can do is I can speak on mine. I don't want to ever I don't ever want to be in a situation where I, I, I'm being controlled. I don't ever want to be in a situation where I'm being monitored and I have to defend myself on a daily. We've been hey there, we're just breaking from the episode for a moment. I just want to tell you about something that's really, really exciting. We speak a lot in this podcast about self-worth and self-doubt and self-belief. And so I have this very exciting challenge for you because what if, what if you could break down self-doubt and find self-worth and find those treasures within you so that you can show the world your value because you know and find your beauty because it's there. You just need to find it together. So I've created a five-day mini challenge. It's a one-on-one -on -one coaching experience and together we will work through this and find those beautiful treasures within so you can shine your light to the world. If this sounds like something you're interested in, we've got I've got all the details on the pinned comments below this video. So Thank you for listening, and let's get back to this exciting conversation. Friends forever. I want to be able to be who I am and do what I do. I have enough in my world to deal with. And I don't need to deal with anyone's questions or outbursts or anything like that. I just want to live a life that I know that I can live peacefully on my terms. Mm -hmm. Now, on top of that, nobody has the right to monitor someone else's life when they have been disconnected for so long. There's a reason why one does not talk to another one. There's a reason why you're blocked. There's a reason why you have no communication. But if you choose to follow on fake accounts, if you choose to dig into someone's life that you have no business in, what you hear 
and how you take it and how you twist it is entirely up to you. Me, I let go, goodbye. I don't think about it. Unfortunately, there are people out there that hang on, watch your every word and your every moment. And it's, it's disturbing. But then again, I cannot do a thing. So, with that said and done, I, I, I believe that once we release this, we're probably going to get another comment. But I think it has to end somewhere. Because giving this fuel is not my way of living. I think we've answered quite a bit. I think we've answered pretty much everything we can without getting into really more details that will make it much more understandable. But I think I think we're I think we're at a point right now where I think we've answered the comment. I think we replied to the comment gracefully. I um, see this no other way. Um, that's that's perfect. And and like I said, um, I didn't I didn't think um, I didn't bring up the comment to fuel it. It's more like using that, that comment as um, as a bridge, as as a learning experience for all of us to to realize oh, yeah. that there is to to toxicity and it happens within a relationship, right? And at the end of the day, the day people do whatever they do. You, 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 we have no business to look into other people's lives. I mean, that we are responsible for our lives and that's it. But the thing is, like you were saying, is we can either accept what people do or just ignore them. And like, and again, I could have ignored this comment. We could have ignored this comment. But I think this comment was good because of the conversation that it fueled. That's what this is about because it right. brings out the positivity and the, 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 the possibility to have conversations that people are really afraid to have because these right. are very contentious issues. Now, I'm going to turn it back to you again because in every, in every relationship, I mean, I've, I've had weird, bad relationships. I mean, we all have, right? But however, when I look back at those relationships, I've always found blessings within the relationship because if those relationships hadn't happened, I wouldn't be here to tell the tale. I wouldn't be here having the conversation with you. That, that so, is absolutely, yeah. So I'm saying, Richard, what blessings did you find or what blessings did you receive from this relationship and how has it, ch has it changed your life in a positive way right now you, on this, at this moment? I'll tell you, my kids, that was the, that was the blessing. That was the blessing that came out of that relationship were my, my, my kids. My three kids. Period. That was it. Learned anything? I've learned how not to behave like that. Lessons? Not to ever deal with anybody like that. Those are valuable lessons. But for the most part, seasons come and seasons go. And if it does not fit and the weather is rough, you must move on to a calm, still air weather system, if you will. I chose to live a calm Un unconditional in ways that I want to be with people that I'm in contact with or relationships that I'm in. I don't want to live in a world of hate. Although being silent and stepping away from an individual that individual can turn it around and say that you're hateful, you are nothing, 
and it all it it, it it's just a spiral of negativity and that's happening okay in the, in the, i'm that's going happening. To, i'm going to stop happening. you at that moment okay um first of all um this is great because what you did is you learned um what you don't want which is great like now you know because you've experienced what you don't want and what you didn't enjoy you know exactly, exactly what you want which is beautiful and another thing you said that's very that's really very important is the power of silence now again um we're going to, um, we can't change anyone. The only person we can change is ourselves and the way we react to things, right? <laughs> so if people out there want to behave the way they behave, it's not our business. No. Our, our, our business for ourselves is to react the way we want to. And sometimes silence is the best way because it doesn't matter how people behave. It matters how we behave. Exactly. So, so um, silence sometimes can be, a, sometimes is a beautiful thing because it says so much more than words can say. So yeah. on that note, I just want to t turn this around a bit because now we know, you know what you want. And, and, and we know now because we've spoken in the past about how with the experience of your past relationship and the growth that you've come out of it and the realization that you want Richard. Richard, stand up for yourself. And Richard is the most important person in Richard's life. With all this, we know that you, you, you've changed this, shifted all this around, and now you have the most beautiful relationship. A relationship on your terms, a relationship that you want, a relationship that you can... And now these are all questions, right? And a relationship that can stand the test of time. Am I right? Yeah. Or what, yeah. can, what are your comments on that? Yeah, I, absolutely. I, it, it's brought me into a point because, again, get, being in a new relationship that is unlike any other relationship ever experienced in, in my life, and I think everyone can experience this as well. Better yet, you have the right to experience a great relationship yes. where there's understanding clear clear understanding of the past that you that you experienced clear understanding of the respect and and honesty of of both and to be accepted for who you are everything that you have gone through everything that you've experienced is something that one is really um, only one can speak on it. Uh, speaking personally, being in a relationship that is so respectful. It, it, let's just put it this way. It's an adult relationship. Yes. There are children. There are childish relationships. <laughs> there are just toxic relationships. But when you find yourself in a settled sea, of peace, love, understanding, respect. And remember, respect. I've always been one to pour my heart out. My, I wear my heart on my sleeve and I give it all and I share all. When you open up such pathways, there is so much clarity in, in in, in starting a new relationship. Now keep in mind to our viewers that, you know, I am not a relationship specialist, therapist, psychologist. But one thing I do know is what I experience, what I don't want, and what I'm experiencing, what I do want, and what I cherish and what I care for. And everybody out there can have the same. It doesn't mean you need to go door to door ringing, you know, trying to find that special one. It's going to happen when it happens. It's going to happen at the most incredible time in your life, you know? You just don't know. So, with that said and done, yeah, I found peace, found happiness, found love, found respect. And... 
the universe is such a great place that it blesses you with things that you have no idea you are capable of handling. <laughs> really, really, it does. It, it, it is such an amazing thing. But I just want to share this because, you know, here we're talking about kind things in a graceful manner. And it would be so sad once this is posted to have any negative, nasty comments. That would be a true test to show the definition of a person's being. And that's all I can say. I'm trying to understand the world we're in right now with, with everything and staying within my circle, staying within my relationship with people that I'm in, in, in constant contact with that I respect and love. I can't change a lot of things out there. I can't change people. All I know is this is something that I can only deal with on my human aspect is living my day, my life, as beautifully and as peacefully as I can. And um, that's beautiful because in the end we can't change anyone in any way. We've got to change ourselves. And once You know, Karina, I, I just want to share something again. I'm sorry for... No, it's fine. You know... I want to make this perfectly clear. There is no way, shape, and form of discrediting anybody here. I don't, I'm not going to sit here and put a name. The person that is watching this or the people that are watching this will know who this is for. And again, out of respect for another human being, there is no way I would ever, ever dismantle anybody, nor have I. But in some comments in other platforms, I've been ridiculed, terrorized, threatened. We're talking within the past 36 hours. Like I said, I cannot and will not control anyone. How does silence, how does silence and disconnecting from a situation that you're truly not happy in, how does that define someone being a narcissist? You know, I've heard this word and the more that I hear it from people, the people that are saying it are the ones that are actually the narcissist. I wake up, I go to work, enjoy my life, enjoy my partnership. I hurt nobody. I prey on nobody. I stalk nobody. I don't make fake accounts to look at what people are doing. Nor do I care. Never have I sent a message to anybody that was unkind, unjust, unless it was in response to a comment that was thrown at me, then I'll speak my piece and move on. I'm not one to sit behind the laptop or the tone phone and make that my life's goal to interrupt someone's life as someone has done to me. You want truth? I gave you the truth. But it's not going to shake me. I've been told that I'm not a motivational speaker. I've been told that I'm a fraud. I've been told that I'm this, I'm that. We're talking within the past 36 hours. I'm going to stop you at this point. 
Okay, not to not to not to uh, minimize anything you say at all. Um, just to say, how are you responding to that? Because um, remember, if someone points a finger, if someone accuses you of something. If you need to defend yourself, that means that what they are saying is truth. On some level, you think it's truth, right? Yeah. But you know, if you can say, okay, you know what, I don't care, and ignore it and move on, then you, the, you take the power back from them and keep it within yourself, right? Um, so whatever people say out there, they'll say out there. And for me, it's, if they are saying that, that means you're doing something right because they feel the need to say those things. No. So how yeah. do you behave and how do you react? Because that's what's important here, not what they say. Because they're exactly. going to say it anyway. Exactly. Out of probably every human being that I've ever had interaction with, there's only one person that has said that. There has been only one person that had the power back then to put me in a in, in a mind where I feel this small. One person. I don't respond. There's no point. There is absolutely no point. Period. But I'm letting you know by my actions, I say nothing, I do nothing. We have to, we have to really understand, I cannot control another human being. I'm going to continue to do what I do. I'm going to continue down the road that I'm on. And only time will tell, but I can assure you, comments will be flying. And again, nobody has the right to comment or rewrite someone's life where they do not belong. If they choose to watch a train wreck, then they're going to look at something and they're going to be able to, they're not going to be able to unsee what they've seen. And if someone wants to take something out of context, again, I have no control, nor is it my place to control. It just goes to show you the mindset of somebody who is so determined to tear you down and break you down. Okay, stop right there. Sorry, I'm going to stop you right there, okay? Because, and I know that's, that was harsh. No. Why does it matter? Why does it matter what anybody says about you um, when you know who you are? Why does it matter if people point fingers at you? Why does it matter you know, um, if people yeah. say you, you're a fraud, you're this, you're that, you're the other? Why does it matter if people are, are calling names out, in, out there? Why does it matter? Because well, at the end of the day, I just want to finish this, this, okay. this one thought, okay? At the end of the day, what you write about someone isn't a reflection about that person. It's a reflection about you. So if I write a comment about that Richard is a bad person, what does that say about me? It doesn't say anything about Richard, does it? Yeah. No, no. And, and, and again, that, that's very difficult because I'm not that person. There's only one person, like I mentioned. But why does it matter, Richard? Why does it matter? Why does it still matter? You know, that is a great question. That is a great question. And if, so, if somebody can have that control over somebody, that's amazing. That's amazing power. Therapy. Talking it out.
that is where I'm at in life, just trying to weave my thoughts and life together. How, how does one give one the power to manipulate and discredit and tear you down just because of spoken words? That's, that, that's, that's a question for the, for the masses, not, not for me to answer. I know what I was in. I know what I went through. But there's always that little sense of self-doubt when comments are made like that. I mean, one could walk around with all their achievements of what they've accomplished. But I'm human. There's still that little piece back there that tells me I'm no good. There's still that piece back there that tells me I'm unattractive. There's still that piece back there that says that I'm no good. It's going to take a good another 10 years of my life through therapy to realize and harness a different way without thinking like that when someone attacks you. Attack. That's what I that's what I'm saying when you're attacked. Words hurt. Mm, mm. Words wound. But also words heal. I'm on more of the speaking of healing, not hurting. And I'm hoping that after this conversation about this topic, about this comment, I think we can wash it away because we have far much greater things to be doing. I believe that one will go through a relationship and they're going to determine, yes, no, move on. That's just how it's going to have to be. Um, thank you, Richard. Uh, and, and of course, while you were saying that, I'm thinking about, you know, the saying that says that people come into your life for a reason, a season or a lifetime. Right. And um, as we grow and as we grow within ourselves, I'm sure you've realized I've seen it myself. As you grow within yourself, your relationships either morph or people just like fall out of your life. Like it's, 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 it's this beautiful dance, really, where you, I think it's line dancing, where one person walks away and another person comes in or whatever the dances are. Right. Square um, dancing. Square day, yes, probably square dancing, you know, like one person at lie or whatever, you know, like they come in and some people just walk straight out of your dance in your life and it's okay because somehow um, you're okay with it and if you can get to that point where you say, thank you, thank you for being in my life, thank you for the lessons, thank you for the love because there's always love on some level, that's where the growth is, where you can say thank you, thank you for the comment, Thank you for being in my life. Thank you for actually taking the time out to say these things because that is amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And when you get to that point, you can say, wow, this is a beautiful place to be and I can really take on a new dance path now or maybe just dance the tango instead of the waltz or whatever right. it is. Yeah, right, yeah. Yeah, I, you know, and, and I'm hoping that this that this message gets gets across to all that that are going through, you know, going through relationships that that, that are truly not, you know, meant to be. Um, yes. It, it's very it's very hard, you know, to to understand all that, especially when you have kids involved, and the kids are there and you're going through it. It, but nobody really understands that in the midst of it, it's. It's afterwards when you start reflecting and understanding, wow, we we've, we've could have done a better job as, yes. a, as a parental whole. Um, again, I have no control over anything, anybody. Time is going to move on. And in that time, I'm going to make the best of it to be the best that I can be and do what I truly love to do as Richard G. Ozuna. 
um, thank you, Richard, because that's the only thing we can do, right? That's it. Just live our lives to the best of our ability and um, just uh, respect other people to live their lives the way they want to because at the end of the day, we are responsible for ourselves and nobody else. So, yes. thank you. Thank you, Richard. Is there anything yeah. else you want to just say before we end this very insightful, interesting yeah. conversation we've just yeah. had? Yeah, you know, like I mentioned, you know, I, I, I'm not a therapist. I'm not a, I'm not a specialist. I'm not any type of relationship specialist. I'm just talking about one thing and one thing only, my situation. So for those of you that are out there that watch, give it, give it time. Continue being who you are surround yourself and only accept greatness around you if you surround yourself or if you're connected to people that are really negative you become negative But if you surround yourself with people that are thinkers, people that are doers, stay away from the ones that procrastinate, that are wishing they can do something, wanting to do something, or they talked about it 30 years ago and they're still talking about it, but they've never done it. Find the ones that move, take action. most importantly is surround yourself with people that love you that respect you know about your past but still welcome you and love you and cannot wait to see you at the end of the day they can't wait to hear about your day when you find the ones that are true your light source and your likeness then and only then have you found peace. And I hope you all find peace because everybody is so deserving of being surrounded by respect, love, understanding, and acceptance. And I think that's gonna be my, my end to where we're at right here. Um, thank you, Richard. I love that. And um, of course, I'm going to have to just add something to that and say, of course. Remember, remember, remember that those are, are things that you can give yourself to. Remember to love yourself. Remember to respect yourself. And mostly remember to accept yourself. And know that no matter what anyone says about you, at the end of the day, you go to sleep on your own no matter who you were and who is that person you are and love yourself enough to know that that person is valuable and deserves a beautiful life so Absolutely. go out and have a beautiful life yeah That's thank it, you Karina. great thank you richard this was great thank you thank you thank you everyone for watching thank you for that comment for this beautiful conversation and join the conversation what are your thoughts about relationships about life, about love, about self-love, about self-acceptance, <laughs> about all those beautiful concepts that we don't always talk about because it's easier to be silent and to keep secret. We need to blow open and, uh, and no more secrets, right? No more silence. <laughs> Let's have those hard conversations. So yeah. thank you, thank you. Thank you again to everyone. Share, like, subscribe. And thank you, Richard. And thank we'll you, see you Karina. all soon. Thank you all. Okay. Thank all you. Right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.